Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Race number 11 at Gulfstream Park on Saturday is the Grade 3 Dania Beach Stakes. Our coverage is presented by DRF Bets. If you sign up right now for a new DRF Bets account, a $200 free bet will be deposited in that account. No deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. And please use the promo code FREEBET09. Let's take a look at this big field of three-year-olds going one mile on the Gulfstream Park turf course. The horse they're all going to have to beat is the number six untamed domain eight to five on the morning line second in the breeders cup juvenile turf a race in which he finished ahead of catholic boy who's now on the derby trail yep. after successfully transitioning to dirt by winning the remsen with a 91 buyer untamed domain is a graded stakes winner already on turf is the only knock really that Graham Motion's probably just using this as a starting off point. He doesn't have to be 100% for this race. Yeah, true enough. I'm sure they got some bigger races circled uh, down the line for this horse who was pretty talented as a two year old. I think the other drawback for him, aside from you know whether or not he's fully cranked off the layoff here, is just his running style. He's got that you know for, uh, off the pace style, which can work against him at times. I mean, this horse. He, he was pretty good as a two-year-old. I will admit, listen, he he improved in every one of his races throughout the year. Um, and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf was a fine effort from him, the best race he's ever run. I wasn't, you know, sold on him before that race. Um, I liked his win in the summer stakes at Woodbine just fine, although that just seemed to me like one of those races where he saw out that distance just a little bit better than everybody else did in there. And I really th feel like that worked to his advantage. Is he the horse to beat in this race? 100% he is, but I don't know how terrified I am to try and beat him. Let's see where he is on the time form U.S. pace projector of the Dania Beach Stakes. And we have Untamed Domain, you're right. He doesn't have maybe the best running style for yeah. this race. He is going to be last in a, in a big field. He's going to have to work something out under Jose Ortiz. On the other end of the spectrum, the number seven, Guido, and I, I agree with this 100%. He's going to go right to the front. This horse has shown five furlong speed for Todd Pletcher. And you look at this pedigree. He's by Frankel. Yeah. So you think a mile should be okay. Yeah. He's a half-sister to Marb Rose, who's really kind of a turf sprinter, seven, seven and a yes. half. This horse has some ability. There's no doubt about it. She's yeah. still, he's still a little bit green. But I don't see any reason, and usually the stretch out to five to eight, you got to be scared, especially yeah. stepping up in class. With Pletcher, with this pedigree, if he gets loose, he's dangerous. Yeah, I agree with that. It'll be interesting to see what he does, because when I, you know, I look at this race and I feel like, yeah, he's obviously a fast horse. And so in a race like this, as he stretches out to a mile for the first time, you expect to see him on the front. On the other hand, He's a Pletcher horse. I'm not accustomed to seeing Pletcher just send his horses off to the front in his races. Um, so we'll see what this horse does. He really has run one well in both of his starts. So the Saratoga debut, where he just got hooked up in a pace duel in that race, prevailed in the duel, couldn't hold on at the end. He just crushed that field last time. This horse has some ability. Very interested to see how he stretches out. Let's talk about the Kitten's Joy Stakes, the local prep for the Dania Beach. You've got several horses exiting that race in here. Uh, the number one, Speed Franco, earned a giant buyer two starts back in the pulpit. I love the way he was ridden that day. Got to the front, dropped the anchor, and then just made a really decisive move at about the 5 16 yep. pole, and then just kind of destroyed that field yep. late. In the Kitten's Joy, they tried different tactics. Um, that was a race, though, that's a true blanket finish. Yeah, it's a tough race for me to evaluate. I don't know how much I love the Kitten's Joy as a race overall, just because, you know, when the whole field sort of hits the wire together, it's it just makes me feel like maybe the race isn't that great. On the other hand, you know, when I look at that race and, and go back through it, I went back through it a bunch of times last night, I just sort of felt like if I was going to take one horse out of there, I would take Speed Franco. They took him off to pace, and you know, and as opposed to the horses who ran second and third in there who were just sort of closing at the very end of the race, this horse tried to make that four wide run around the turn. He couldn't quite reach contention, but he never stopped running through the stretch. I thought he ran well, and I'm with you on his race two starts back. I think he ran really well in the pulp, and I don't know if it was, you know, 94. Well, I don't know how much I believe that figure, but he ran well in that race. I think he's a super dangerous horse. Time for him. U.S. has him second on the pace projector. I would not be surprised if, if they're right, and he's more forwardly placed in the early portion of this race. First time turf runner, uh, the three, Wildcats Legacy. This horse is a stakes winner against fellow Florida breds on turf by Wildcat Air, 11% winners with first-time turf runners. This horse's full sister with stakes play sprinting on the turf. Yeah, uh, has a full sister who could really run on the turf, but sprinting. This horse so far has been a sprinter on the main track and a pretty good one, too. Um, we'll see how he transfers to turf, stretch it out. To me, 
you know, he's just not my kind of horse in this kind of a race. Muck Tree got a nice ride last time out with blinkers on under Jose Ortiz, but this is a really tough outside post yeah. position. Uh, Jose Lascano, pardon me. Uh, he's going to have to really work something out from there. But I think this horse has something. It just is when they put him in against greatest stakes yeah. competition, it didn't work out. I'm not holding the race two back against him over soft turf. Yeah, soft turf. I, I like this horse's debut at Saratoga. I actually felt like he got a nice trip in the race, but I felt like he ran really well to win that race. I was a little surprised he didn't run better in his next two starts. Um, obviously, he rebounded at a price last time with new blinkers, and maybe that helped him a little bit. But I think what really helped him last time is what you were alluding to. He got a great ride in that race and took advantage a little bit. But this horse is okay. Pletcher has the seven, also the nine. Channel Cat by English Channel out of a Kitten's Joy mare. Talk about turf pedigree. Third last time out, but I think that's a race that they can build on. It was yeah. his first start off a little bit of a layoff. My one actual concern, I think a mile's going to end up being short for him. Yeah, it's true enough. I mean, he was beaten by a, a stable mate of his, Maraud, last time. It was pretty good. Um, he just couldn't quite kick on with that horse, but he ran fine. Um, his race before that, where he was placed first in the Speed Franco race, I don't know about you, Dan. I thought that was a pretty questionable DQ. I know Speed Franco sort of drifted out in front of him in the stretch, but I don't think this horse was catching Speed Franco in that race. Two questions about the five Golden Dragon, 20 to 1 on the morning line. One, is he dirtied up? And two, even if he is dirtied up, is he good enough to win this race? Because his two turf races before the Breeders' Cup yeah. were okay, fine performances. They threw him to the Wolves in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. He couldn't win that race. He no. couldn't win the Cecil B. DeMille against Analyze, who's one of the best three-year-olds on any surface, yeah. and Publius Cyrus, who came back to win the Eddie Logan with an 85 yeah, Listen, there are worse long shots in a race like this than this horse, who's, as you say, his races uh, three and four back. He ran well in both of those races to win the two of them. I don't care about his last two starts. This is a better spot for this horse. Comatin the four, winner last time out, but against starter, optional claiming foes. He's going to have to improve by leaps and bounds. Yeah, I mean, I like to see him get the win last time. He ran fine in that race, but he's matched up against a couple of these horses already, and he just hasn't been quite good enough. Here's our picks for the grade three Dania Beach Stakes. I think we'll agree that Untamed Domain, the six, is probably oh, yeah. the horse to beat in this race. For me, he's a must-use in any kind yep. of multiple race wager. From a single race standpoint, we'll take some, a shot with a couple of 15 to 1 chances. You'll go with the two, Question di Tempo, who just turned around. No surprise, considering no. this pedigree. They switched the source to turf, and he got good. Yeah, he really did improve in his two turf. I know it was at Tampa. I know the races didn't come back that fast. I know that he got to the lead in both of those races, but I just, to me, he was a totally different horse on turf than he was on dirt first time out. Um, his win um, to break his maiden, um, yeah, he worked his way to the front in that race. I love the way that he finished in there, though. He was much the best in that race. He was even better last time as far as I'm concerned. Yes, he controlled the pace once again, but he kicked in strongly through the stretch. The horse that ran second to him, uh, a grand motion horse, who, as another horse, really improved on grass. That horse was running through the stretch. This horse was never letting him in the race. I, the buyers aren't there yet. I think this horse is pretty good, and I think um, at a price in a race like this, maybe this is the day to take a shot with him. You're going to go two, one, six, and seven. Renaissance Frolic is my 15 to one chance. This horse was a maiden winner at Gulfstream at this distance back in August. I'm not going to hold that Kentucky Downs race against no, them. It, it, it's such a difficult turf course for older horses to navigate let alone two-year-olds, and he wasn't embarrassed in that race. Then they threw him against yeah. dirt horses three in a row. His kitten's joy last time out. Uh, he finished evenly in between horses. I thought, f all in all, he got the right ride and trip yeah. under a Rad Ortiz. But I think this is a horse that if you give him a little bit of pace, he's going to come running. I like him stretching out another half of furlong. Renaissance Frolic at 15 to 1. In multis, I lean on the 8 and 6. In single races, 8, 6, 7, and 1. If you're playing the grade 3 Dania Beach, if you're playing this nice Saturday Gulfstream Park card from home, I have to reiterate, $200 free bet is a really nice deal. No deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join is where you go to sign up for DRF bets. Please use the promo code FREEBET09. An approximate post time for the grade three. Dania Beach, race 11 at Gulfstream on Saturday, 516 Eastern. Good luck.